Hello everyone and welcome. It's <clears throat> My name is Tamara Bennett and I'm a, um, the owner of Southern Adornments Decor and I'm losing my voice today apparently. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be adding a template onto a piece of canvas. So I want you to raise your hand virtually in the comments, say that's me. If you've ever picked up a blank canvas and got ready to paint and been super intimidated by it. Maybe you're just looking at it and you're like, I don't want to mess up. I can't draw anything. I like, I'm not good at hand, you know, drawing. Like I can't even draw a stick figure. So what do I do? How do I get started? I don't know about you guys, but painting on canvas for, for me is like more intimidating. I don't know what it is, but painting on wood is no big deal. But painting on canvas, it feels different for me. It doesn't feel like it's as whimsical or as fun, even though it should be. And I always get a little bit more intimidated. Hey, Annette. Hey, Gina, y'all tell me if, if you ever get intimidated painting on canvas, because if you do, today I've got a solution for you. We're gonna be using our printable templates on canvas. Funny thing is, is I actually had somebody um, send a text to my text number. You can text me at the link that is in the video description. And she uh, texted me, she said, hey, um, I'm in your template club and I just wanted to know, like, can we use these on Canvas? And I said, it's funny that you should ask because I'm actually going to be demonstrating how to do that in our Facebook Live today. Hi, Jerry and Rochelle. Hey, Ruby. Good morning, Christy. What's, how is it going in your part of the neck, neck of the woods? <laughs> Christy uh, paints on Canvas all the time, so this is definitely not something intimidating for her. Gina says she gets intimidated. I'm glad I'm not alone. It's funny because people are always like, really? When I tell them that painting on canvas scares me a little. It just feels a little different than painting on wood. But knowing that I can put a template of mine on the canvas makes it a little less scary. Uh, Barbara says, I know. I know I do, but I do it anyway. And then I mess it up and I fix it. That's the good thing about paint. You can always fix it, right? So we're gonna be doing this cute little Easter truck design. This was one of the new ones that we released on Friday. So you can still get this design at shopdoorhangers.com. I printed it out as a 12 inch size. The, our templates come in four sizes. And so um, you can just pull up the 12 inch PDF and print it out on your home printer. Um, it's gonna be just barely bigger than a regular sheet of paper. So this actually is like an extra sheet of paper here and here. And so I just had to cut it and tape it together to make it the right size. Um, <laughs> Rochelle says, I paint on them, but tips are always appreciated. Christy says, I should treat it the same. She said, y'all are good. Just pretend it's wood. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So we've got our graphite paper. If you don't, if you're a crafter and you don't own graphite paper, you're missing out. For years, I did not know what graphite paper was. I didn't even know it existed. But once I learned about it, I've been using it all the time. So get a piece of graphite paper. I picked up this piece at uh, Hobby Lobby and it's 24 inches by 18 inches, I believe. And then my canvas is 12 by 16. So this little 12 inch size template fits perfectly in the center. And so in just a few minutes, we're gonna paint our background first, but in a few minutes, we're gonna lay down the graphite paper, lay this on top and we're gonna trace it so that our design is on the canvas and we don't have to draw anything. Hi, Laura. How, is, how are things going? Hey, Carol. She said, I paint canvases all the time, sometimes better than on wood as a door hanger. Hmm. I haven't thought about using a canvas as a door hanger, but that would be really fun. Okay, so let's just start with painting the background. Um, I think I'm just going to kind of do like sky and grass down below. So I'm going to use this color. It's called Baby Blue. And I'm pulling a lot of the colors that I'm using today from this little rainbow paint pack that Deco Art put together for me. Um, it's got a, a lot of really nice spring colors. And you can see a lot of those colors on the door hanger behind me. Um, that's the one we're going to be teaching in March in our Happy Flowers workshop. We haven't started signups for that just yet, but if you want to get your name on the wait list so that you're reminded when it's time to sign up, I did put the link for that in, up in the description for you. Beth says it's fun to try something new. I agree. I get tired of doing the same thing all the time, so every now and then I want to switch it up and try something different, and I think it kind of challenges me. It makes me um, a better painter. Hi, Rita and Amy. So I've taken that baby blue color and I added some white to it. I just squirted both here in my little egg carton. I'm not really even going to mix them up. I'm just going to dip in both. So I've got both colors and we're going to start making our sky right across the top here. So your paper always looks shiny when you print your templates. Is it the paper? No, if, if, if my paper looks shiny, it's because I use shipping tape to tape the pieces of paper together. And um, that's what you're seeing is the shine on the shipping tape. 
Look how pretty this is. See how it's kind of streaking and making like a an uneven sort of sky? It's because I have white and blue in my egg carton here, and I'm dipping in both when I'm painting. And so this can be very imperfect. You can just streak it right across here. Kay on TikTok likes the door hanger behind you. Oh, thank you. If you like the door hanger behind me and you wanna learn how to paint it, like I said, this is the one we are teaching in our Happy Flowers Workshop in March. Um, it'll be at the end of March, so that gives you plenty of time to gather up your supplies and get ready for it. Um, we'll start signups for that very, very soon. So if you wanna be reminded when it's time to start signing up, um, click the link for the wait list. Okay, let me visualize here how far down my sky needs to go. So if I want my truck to go here, I may want the sky to kind of come down to about three-fourths of the way down, right about there. How do you keep the graphite from rubbing off on the background? Um, sometimes it's difficult to keep the graphite from rubbing off on the background. Um, I usually just try not to touch it as much as possible to let it, um, let my hand kind of just not rest on it as much because the more you touch it, the more chance you'll have of accidentally transferring graphite paper on there where you don't want it. I've heard that the little Tombow erasers do a good job, though, of erasing stuff like that because they have, like, a little bit of a sandy grit in them. So I need to get one of those and see if that would work. So if any of y'all have tried that before, let me know. Okay, I feel like it needs more white, so I'm adding more white to my egg carton, and I'm just streaking the white in now to kind of lighten it up. Or if you wanted to get real fancy, you could paint clouds in there. <laughs> Mine's just going to be a streaky blue and white sky. Okay. I feel like it needs more white. It's got a lot of blue streaks. So we're just going to add some more white to kind of soften those up. I'm going to put my white in a separate egg carton because I kept picking up too much blue. And again, there's no wrong way to do this. You can just kind of keep working on it till you get it the way you like. Don't feel like yours has to look just like mine. I'm just covering up a little bit more of the blue in places. Do you paint the edges of your canvas too? I don't always, I don't know. I don't think about it, but yeah, you probably should. It would probably create a more finished looking design in the end. So go ahead and paint those edges. I don't normally paint on canvas, so I didn't really think about it. So thank you for bringing that up because I definitely would have at the end been like, oh, I wish I'd done that. But you could always go back and add that. I'm sure Christy has an opinion. <laughs> Christy probably paints the edges of hers. If she's still here, she may have already moved on to something else. All right, now we've got the top and the edges of our canvas painted. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting some grass down here at the bottom. Let's see, we'll use, I think I'm gonna use this green. It's called Irish Moss. I might actually use two or three colors of green. And we'll add in a little bit of this Hauser light green. Actually, I need to keep these out so that I remember. Um, if you want to get the paint color list for what I'm doing today, you can get that by texting the word list to the number up in the video description. If you've already done that in the past, no need to do it a second time. Each week we send out a supply list um, with all the colors that we used on the current project so that you guys can um, go back and watch the video and you can get the colors out that you need. Christy. <laughs> Christy said, depends on if I'm putting a frame around it or hanging it. I hadn't even thought about putting a frame around it. That's a good idea. Also, if you don't have a canvas, you can use, um, like, what's it called, Christy? Is it the, a mixed media pad? Or maybe they make canvas paper, and you can paint on that, and then you just put it inside of a frame. Ooh, this green is pretty. And that definitely would take up less storage space than a, a large, like, thick canvas like this. We're going to have to streak in some dark green, too, or something, because this is really, really bright. Like, not realistically bright, bright green, which we're not going for real realistic here. We're just going to kind of make this as fun and whimsical as possible. I 
I must not have put very much paint in that egg carton because I am not picking enough of it up. If you feel like you're not making much progress, like you're not putting much paint down, it's probably because you don't have enough on your brush. And let's go ahead and get a darker green also. Let's see. I'll do this one. It's in the rainbow pack. It's called Forest Green. We'll get a little bit of both of those and kind of add them in to add a little bit of depth. Let's give away some happy mail, should we? Shall we? <laughs> Y'all comment and tell me if you've ever painted on canvas before or if you prefer painting on something else. Let me know what that is. Y'all leave a comment and we'll pick somebody at random and I'll send you some happy mail <coughs> in the snail mail. Get some more of that dark green. Right now, I feel like we're just laying down a good like base layer and we're gonna paint our truck on top of it. And at the end, we may come back in and add some little sprigs of grass around the tree so that it looks a little bit more like grass. But this is just kind of a good background coat. Paint those edges. <coughs> I think I missed part of my edge up there. I have to go back with the blue and touch that up. The first time I ever painted on canvas that I can think of, I went to one of those um, paint party, uh, like it was like an art studio where they teach you how to paint and I painted a rooster <laughs> of all things. Of course, it was a rooster. Y'all know I love chickens and um, it was really fun, but I didn't love my project when I got home, so I didn't hang it on the wall. Um, I kind of felt like it wasn't good enough to be hung on the wall. You know, in my opinion, it's like, I always felt like if art wasn't, I don't know, like we're all so critical of our own art. And sometimes I don't love my own art enough to sit and stare at it while I'm sitting on the couch. So I think that's why I fell in love with door hangers is because I don't feel like I have to sit and look at it. I can put it on the door and then shut the door and it's out there. And then I just glimp, get a glimpse of it every once in a while when I open the door. It's, <laughs> that, it's it, There's less of a commitment. <laughs> uh, Jackie has never painted on canvas. Okay, and Deb Giorino, Gi Giorno, is that like DiGiorno, like pizza? Deb Giorno, Giorno, I I'm probably butchering your name, I apologize. You're our happy mail winner. Um, so send us an email with your address and we'll send you some happy mail in the, win in the, in the snail mail. I can't talk today. Rhonda loves painting on canvas. What is a chain paint party? That sounds like fun. Tammy says, I love to paint on canvas, but I would love to learn more about it. You keep forgetting to save your egg gardens. Oh, they're great to have around when you're ready to paint. Jerry paints on canvas all the time. Nicole says she does it a lot at her craft nights at the local library. That sounds like a lot of fun. I love the idea of doing it at the library too. Um, I rinsed my brush because I need to put just a little bit of blue on the edge here that I missed, so. See if I missed some over here where it meets up with the green. And somehow one of my hairs got into that, that brush. Abstracts on canvas. So see, that is a whole other ball game, Dwayne. When you paint abstract on something, you have to have an imagination and you have to be able to be comfortable with painting something that's not staying inside the lines. I've done a couple of abstract pieces before and you kind of just have to feel it. And I enjoy them every time. But when I taught an abstract piece at like a paint party, there were always two kinds of people. There were the ones who loved them because it was more free. You didn't have to stay inside the lines. And then there were the ones that were more like perfectionists who would be like, oh, like, what do I do? Like, what if I put a wrong stroke here, a wrong stroke there? I'm like, you don't understand. Like, there's no wrong strokes. You just do it however you want to do it. And you don't have to follow inside the lines. And once they were able to let go of that, they enjoyed it. But the ones that couldn't were stressed out the whole paint party. And they were like, never again. Next time I will choose something where Tamara draws something on there for me. And I just follow inside the lines. <laughs> Vanessa says, I'm too nervous. I will paint it up. Uh, mess it up. Vanessa, don't be nervous. Worst case scenario, you paint over the whole thing white and you start over. White will cover it up. It'll be fine. 
Okay, we're gonna get this nice and dry so that we can use our um, template to transfer our cute little truck to the canvas. If you don't have this design, it's available at shopdoorhangers.com. It's called the Easter Truck. And um, if you wanna actually get it cut out of wood to paint it on wood, we have that on, in there also. But if you're not quite ready to make the commitment of buying a, a printable template, I wanna encourage you to check out our free template library. Um, the, the link is up in the description. You can get up to, I think there's five or six different designs in there you can go in and download and you can try out a template before you buy one. Um, there's like a, a, a box of heart, a, a box of chocolates in the shape of a heart, like for Valentine's Day. There's, I think, a sunflower and a mermaid. There's some other ones in there too, maybe a Christmas tree. So now that we've got our background painted with our sky and our grass, we're gonna lay our graphite paper. Notice that the shiny side is down. That's where the graphite is. Graphite is nothing more than like pencil lead, okay? So that when we're done tracing this, it's going to look like we've drawn the truck on the canvas with a pencil. So I'm kind of feeling for where, where my canvas is underneath so I can get this on there nice and straight, or as straight as possible. If you need to, what you can do is you can, this is actually smarter probably, you can tape it down. Can you reuse it after this? Yes, so you can reuse the same piece of graphite paper over and over and over. I have had the same piece for, I probably used it a hundred times. Um, eventually, I guess it would eventually run out of having enough graphite on the back, but it would be a long time before that happens. Okay, so I just got out a little tiny piece of painter's tape, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find where on the canvas I want this to sit. And then I'm gonna put this little painter's tape up here at the top just to tape it down so that, whoop, it didn't stick. Hang on. I think my paint may still be just a tad bit damp. Is it gonna stay? I just need it to hold it loosely there. So once you get it placed where you want it, then kind of just pull this up at like a hinge, lay your graphite paper underneath, and then just lay it back down. So that allows you to get good placement. My graphite paper is way bigger than my canvas here, so I'm struggling. There we go. And I think I might have, did I tape it on crooked? Hang on, we gotta double check here. I sure enough did. I taped it on there crooked when I got ready to, the, I think it's because the bottom of my paper, I cut it crooked. Hold on, give me a second. Hold please. That's what my friend Sarah Williams always says. Hold, please. Okay, that looks better. Now lift it up gently. Slide your graphite paper underneath. Make sure it's nice and flat. And now you're just going to need a like a stylus or something with a, a blunt tip. I'm just using a ballpoint pen. And we're just going to trace our truck so that the, the lines transfer to the design underneath. And it's always smart to kind of like start in one area and work your way out or whatever so that you remember what you've traced and what you haven't. Sometimes it can be hard to tell where you've traced. But just try to do it somewhat systematically so that you remember. I'm just going to start by tracing all the details of the truck before I trace those bunnies. And we have different trucks like this in our shop. So if you don't like the bunny truck, we also have one with like a little beehive in the back with bumblebees. Uh, we've got one with Christmas presents in the back. Um, I think we even have one with school supplies. So we've got a bunch of different ones you can choose from. It's trying to shift around on me. Keep my hand on it to hold it still. Let me make sure this is transferring because I'm not pressing very hard at all. But you gotta push hard enough that it actually makes a mark underneath. You can barely see it. I think what I need to do is put something underneath this. Let's see if this will fit. I need to put something underneath the canvas so the canvas isn't bowing in in the middle. I gotta keep this where exactly where it's at because I can't have it shifting. 
put my laptop underneath. Something that will make the canvas hard so that when I trace it will, there we go. Now I can get a nice solid mark when I'm tracing. Because the canvas is flexible, the graphite paper wasn't really transferring very well because I wasn't able to push down very hard. Okay, so as old people call it carbon paper. Carbon paper, yes, that's another name for it. I've always called it graphite paper, but carbon paper, same thing. Okay, I've got to lift this up and check and see. I kind of need to retrace my windows up here because that didn't really get transferred very good. So the past few weeks, we've been showing different ways that you can use our templates. Um, we've showed how to do it on a wooden block. We've shown how to do it on like an acrylic frame, which would kind of be the same uh, technique as doing it on um, a window or something like that. Uh, what else have we done? We showed how to cut it out like as an ornament size to use for Valentine tiered tray decor. We also plan to, to show how to use them like on fabric. So um, I've bought, I've ordered some fabric paint, but it hasn't gotten here yet. So when that arrives, we will, we will do that technique. But there's all different ways you can use these templates besides cutting them out of wood. So I'm sure some of you guys have several of these templates saved on your computer and you just need to be using them in all different kinds of ways. Evidently, carbon paper has clicked with several people. Oh, several people are like, oh, I know what carbon paper is. <laughs> Maybe I should just call it that. Carbon paper, graphite paper. It's the same sort of thing. Okay. I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and trace the word Happy Easter on here. Just because I'm afraid that if I wait till later, I won't be able to get my little truck realigned to trace it again later on top of everything. Rochelle says she saw a, tri a tip to cover your template with press and seal makes them last longer. Cover your template with press and seal. Like on the top of it? I'm it confused. I think to save the template can use more than once. Oh, that's a good idea. Or I'm sure you could laminate them if you really wanted to go that to that much trouble. Press and seal is probably the cheaper route of laminating something. Okay, so let me kind of show you my little truck. See how now it looks like it was drawn on here? There's a couple places where it's really, really thin. You can barely see it, but um, I can see it well enough to paint, so we're good. I'm glad you remembered that. Aaliyah was Who's taking sleeping? a couple pictures. Sorry. It's all right. Maybe we should have taken a quick picture of me tracing it. We'll, we'll fake it, okay? This is for the blog, <laughs> in case you're wondering. <laughs> so you gotta get the get the process down so they can see that we're tracing the design. Do one of paint tracing the letters too. Okay. Okay. We weren't really tracing it. We were just faking it. <laughs> it was in the comments, and not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right, so um, as you can see, when I retraced, it kind of messed up right in here. There's like a little bit of an echo to the design. We can paint over that or we could try to erase it. I feel like painting over it would probably be the easier thing to do. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to paint, and I still trace that on there a little crooked, so our truck's going to be bumping along the road. Um, <laughs> we're going to paint the truck first. And I'm going to use this color from the rainbow pack. It's called Purple Cow. And we'll just get a small, let's see, a small flat tip brush. This one is about a half inch wide. And all of these brushes I got on the DecoArt website. And so we're just gonna take this purple cow design, I mean color, and paint it inside the body of our little truck. You can make that if you need to. And so you can just follow inside your pencil lines and just start adding that purple in. And if you want to add a little bit more of a shade, get a second color of purple. I might do that here in a second. And just fill in those lines. So I'm just kind of covering up my pencil lines with the purple. 
and then I'm just painting them in. So this is where the fun part starts to happen. And if you accidentally paint over something you shouldn't have, it's okay. You can always touch it up later. It's just paint. Is this seeming a little less intimidating to some of you guys? <laughs> so Laura says, it's okay. You wanted it whimsical. That is true. Christy, uh, I love her painting style. I don't know if she's still even on here. If you guys don't follow Christy, you should. The Social Easel. She teaches canvas painting. Um, her her design, this her style, um, and she would probably call it this too, is like slightly messier than some people's style, and I love it. It makes it where you don't feel like you have to perfectly stay inside the lines. You can just kind of like freely paint and have fun with it. You can add all kinds of fun details that maybe wouldn't be on something that was realistic. Um, but her her specialty is painting flowers. So if you need tips for painting flowers. She is your go-to gal. Okay, we have a question. Could you trace the image with a Sharpie first and then paint over it? So she could go ahead and do these for a large class. Yeah, so if you wanted to trace the design with a Sharpie, that would make it probably easier for your customer to see if you're teaching like a class. Um, I would definitely recommend that. I may actually trace my Happy Easter lettering with a, a Sharpie just because I'm going to paint over it here in a minute and I want to be able to still see those lines. Joy says she believes she can try this technique. Good. I'm glad you think it makes it more doable because painting on canvas doesn't have to be scary. I, I sometimes in my head think it's going to be scarier than it is, but when I actually sit down to do it, when I'm sitting here actually painting like I am right now, I enjoy it way more than I thought I would. And I'm, and I'm always kind of surprised at how less intimidating it is once I actually get something traced on here and actually start painting. What is the name of the other painter site? It is the Social Easel. I'm getting the link. Oh, Aliyah's gonna drop a link for you guys. I'm just tracing the shape of this Happy Easter lettering with a Sharpie so that I can see it better through the paint. I think I, sh I can paint over it and still see it, but we're gonna test that to be sure. Okay, Christy's hand is dry. Christy has taught several um, tutorials in our Painter's Clubhouse as a guest. So if you um, are a Painter's Clubhouse member, you definitely want to go back and watch some of those. Oh, she says I need to slow down so she can... Well, I was answering questions. Take a picture of me tracing the lettering with the Sharpie. <laughs> okay. We're always saying how we need more pictures on the blog. <laughs> so we are trying to be more intentional about pausing during our tutorials and taking photos. So thank you for being patient with us. Okay, I'm going to take a darker purple too and just add because I feel like it just needs a little something. Amber says she never thought she could paint without a stencil until now. <laughs> Painting without a stencil. Okay, this color is called grape juice. What kind of stencils do you usually use? Like, are you talking about like pattern stencils? Stuff with, for painting, um, like chevron or buffalo plaid or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Look, look at this side, see the color? And then look at that side. Do you see how it suddenly adds more depth to add in a little bit of dark purple? And we're just kind of streaking it in on top of our purple cow color. And if you feel like you get too much, just go back and get a little bit more of the purple cow or dip in both of them. That's kind of like the cheater way or the easier way. I shouldn't call it the cheater way, but it's like the easier way to do it. Just to dip in both colors, just to add a little bit more of a variety when you're painting so that it doesn't look too flat, too much like a coloring book page. I feel like I got too much, so I'm getting a little bit more of that purple cow and kind of lightening it up a little bit. And if you accidentally get outside the lines like I just did, you can either make that line a little wider or you can just let it go because this is a whimsical canvas painting. It doesn't matter. Did you just put the corner of your brush in the darker color? 
Um, not really. I'm kind of dipping my brush in both colors at the same time, like half on one side of the brush and half on the other. That's why you're seeing me get a lot more purple. If you want less purple, definitely just dip just like the corner of your brush. But let me kind of, oh, I forgot to do this little side mirror here. So if you want less, just kind of dip the corner. If you want more, get more. Okay. So you can kind of see how we've got more variety in the color of our truck now. All right, so now that we have traced over our lettering with the Sharpie, I feel safe enough to maybe start painting this over it. I don't know if the Sharpie's gonna show through the paint, but we're gonna test it out and see. Right now it doesn't appear to be showing through, but I kind of feel like maybe after the paint dries, it will show through. paint around our little bumper and the little license plate and then we're going to add a little bit of that darker purple in <coughs> just making sure that none of that sky is popping through you don't want to see that make sure you get it on thick enough to cover what do you call the style of your painting uh definitely definitely whimsical that would be the style because it's not, it's definitely not fine art. It's fun art. <laughs> not that fun art, not that fine art isn't fun, but it's less intimidating to do this kind of art. Okay. Added a little bit more dark purple in over here to kind of just differentiate the sides from the tailgate. So let me just kind of lighten that up. If you get a stroke that's a little too dark, just kind of do like a little sweeping motion on top of it. And it kind of just blends the colors a little better so that it doesn't feel like it's such a harsh stroke. Okay, now let's paint our bumper. I'm gonna use a light gray. Let's see, let's go with this one. It's called Slate Gray. And I think I'm also gonna streak in a little bit of white and black. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that as well, but I'm gonna put my black in a separate egg carton hole because I'll be using it again later and I don't want it just muddied up with the gray. Do Painters Clubhouse members get a discount on wooden blanks in your shop? Yes, they get 20% off year round. Let's do a happy mail for somebody watching on TikTok. So if you're watching on TikTok right now, I want you to comment and tell me um, what kind of crafting you do. Or if you don't do crafting, what kind of crafting do you want to be doing? And um, if you make videos, let me know. I would love to go and follow you on TikTok. I try to follow back other crafters on TikTok, so because I get inspired by watching you guys create. This is the slate gray color. I'm just adding kind of a base coat of it on top of where the bumper goes. And then I'm picking up a little bit of white and kind of streaking it in. And again, this whole time so far, we've just been using, with the exception of doing the background, but for painting the truck, we've just been using this little flat tip brush. It's a good size. And I'm gonna pick up a teeny bit of black on the corner of my brush and streak in a little bit of black. If it scares you to pick up a little bit on the corner, switch brushes and get like a little round tip brush and use it instead. But see how I'm kind of putting it down first and then I'm kind of just taking and blending it and streaking it. I want it to look a little streaky because I want it to look like the bumper is like old. This is not a brand new truck. <laughs> Let me do a little bit more. When I say a little on the corner of your brush, you see how you can barely see that? Just barely there. Just enough to add a little streak. Do you do more on TikTok than on Facebook? No, I have way more videos on Facebook than TikTok. Um, but if you're watching on TikTok right now and you wanna be able to re-watch this video later or um, any of my videos, I have a YouTube channel and you can go subscribe to the YouTube channel. This video will be up on YouTube by this afternoon. So we have like over probably a couple hundred videos. 
All right, our TikTok winner is Wyatt Nana 2019. Send us an email with your um, information and we will send you something in the mail. She does glitter tumblers. I see somebody who does different paintings for fundraisers. Somebody's too intimidated to make videos. It's okay. It's on TikTok. You can have fun with it. You can just relax and there's no, you don't have to be a certain way. It's fun. Jackie on Facebook makes wreaths. My friend Damon makes wreaths. Do you follow Damon, Damon Oates? Okay, now we're just taking black. This is probably the easiest part of the whole painting. We're just painting in the tires. join Painters Clubhouse. Oh, if you're interested in Painters Clubhouse, it'll be opening up again on March 28th. So I would definitely recommend that you get on the wait list for our Happy Flowers workshop that we're doing. It'll be going on the week before Painters Clubhouse opens. And we always have a couple of special bonuses and um, like a discount for the people who participate in the workshop um, to join Painters Clubhouse. So if you're a participant in the workshop, it's definitely going to benefit you when it comes time to join Painters Clubhouse. So do the workshop. Okay, we just got our little tires painted on here. If you wanna add a little bit of like color variation in your tires, pick up just a little bit of that gray or white or something like that and just put a little bit of that on there um, to make it look like it's not just a flat, flat black color. I don't know why I'm suddenly being quiet like you can hear me when, in the photo when she takes a picture. <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit of white too. I'm going to streak that on there. But we're just making them a little less solid black. A little variety of color there. Okay. Now we need our, um, let's see. Hang on. Let me look at my picture. I, haven't, I've got my, I always have my little picture handy. That way I can remember what I kind of had in mind when I originally designed this, because I do all my designing on the app on my iPad called Procreate. Um, and so I create all my designs on Procreate first, and that kind of helps me come up with the concept and design what I'm gonna paint. It makes it easier when you sit down to paint to kind of like make color choices and stuff, because you're not having to completely come up with a color palette or a design. I can kind of just look at the idea that I had and make it come to life with paint. So there's our little um, license plate. And then our little side mirrors. They're kind of white, but kind of gray. So I'm gonna put some white down here and then I may streak some gray in. Take just a little bit of gray now and kind of add it on there. Just so our, our side mirrors don't look white, white. More like a mirror. And then we're going to do our background behind our bunnies. So this is just the slate gray with a little bit of white in it. <clears throat> just paint around those bunnies. Which you can kind of almost paint over them just a little bit. So I'm not perfectly staying inside the lines because it's, it's faster to not stay inside the lines so much. And I'm adding a little bit of white and then going back with a little bit of gray. That was more gray than I wanted, so let's spread that out a little bit. <clears throat> I'm just kind of dabbing it in between the bunnies in different places where you can see the window behind the bunnies. Put a little bit up here. And this can kind of be a little messy because our bunnies are going to show up on top of this. And um, it's not going to be so noticeable. So don't uh, overanalyze how this should look. Ooh, can't tell how to draw on uh, yes, so we actually have a course for that. So if you're interested in learning how to draw your own designs in Procreate, there's a course at procreate4makers.com and the four is a number four. Procreate4makers.com. Um, you can go and take that course and it'll walk you through how to draw and design on Procreate. 
So you see how we just kind of streaked that in behind the bunnies a little bit, a little bit of gray and white. And now we're gonna paint our bunnies. And let's see, let's start with the ones in the background. We've got one that's kind of pink and one that's kind of green right here. So let's see, what, let me choose a pink. Choosing pink is always like, ah, uh, okay, I don't know which pink I wanna use. I kinda wanna go with a brighter one, but then I kinda don't, maybe this one. We'll start with this color. So this is cactus flower. It's kind of become one of my new favorite pinks for this year. It's a kind of a corally pink. I'm probably gonna add a pattern on top of our bunny before we're completely done. And so we'll have to either choose another pink or darken up this color pink to do that pattern. But we're gonna start by using this as our base coat on our bunny. And if you're ever like, whoops, I just painted over an area I wasn't supposed to. It's okay, we'll touch it up. If you're ever not sure what color will look good with another color, it's always a good idea to kind of either take the paint bottles and line them up like this, where you're trying to decide your palette and look at the colors on the bottom and decide if you like that color palette together. If you're not sure by looking at the bottoms of the, the paint bottles, you could always like add a little swatch on a piece of paper or um, cardboard, kind of paint them next to each other. Or another thing you can do is you can paint popsicle sticks with each color and write the color names on them. And then you always have those on standby for reference. If you have another tip for that, let me know in the comments. I'm always learning from you guys. I actually learned the popsicle trick from Alexandra on um, Instagram. She was one of our guest painters in the Painters Clubhouse and she taught us that little trick. She always has the most beautiful colors on her door hangers and it's always a very unique kind of palette of colors. And so I asked her, I was like, what is your trick? And she showed us the popsicle trick and I just thought that was just brilliant. Side with a um, that's up to you, but yeah, I usually do. Okay, that little bunny's ear disappears behind that bunny's ear. I have to really look at my picture because after doing so much painting on here, I've covered up a lot of my graphite lines, and so I'm having to kind of pay real close attention to where I'm painting so that I make sure that my bunny looks like a bunny. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna have to go back in and add some more gray between these two bunnies' heads because I accidentally painted that bunny's head a little too far over. Okay, let's do the green bunny over here next. I'm gonna choose a nice like pastel green. This um, color list is gonna have a lot of colors in it. Let's see, that's probably too dark. What color would you do for this thing? Green bunny is odd to begin with. He is. Maybe we shouldn't do a green bunny. Should it be a different color? Oh, I'm just picking at you. <laughs> one of these back here is yeah. too dark. Maybe a turquoise instead. And I could do one. like a blue blue right here in the middle. Oh, that's a good color. Thank you. This one's called Sea Breeze. It's a nice greenish turquoise. I'm running out of egg carton holes too. I probably should have gotten a 12 holder instead of a nine because this door hanger has a lot of colors in it. Ahead so much. <laughs> She's giving me a hard time because I don't plan or think things through uh, before I do them a you lot of times. things through. You just don't plan. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Planning and thinking things through? You think about it. You just don't. <laughs> That's true. I do think about it, but I don't always like come up with a game plan beforehand. I'm usually just fly by the seat of my pants, go live and figure it out later. RJ's going to get that picture right away to have it done by <laughs> Easter. Good. Hmm, someone mentioned yellow. Ooh, that would have been a really good idea. I should have seen that earlier. We could do yellow in the middle, I suppose, instead of blue, since there's so much blue on the sky in the background. Hmm, yeah, I think that would pop. Because if you'd painted this on a door hanger, you wouldn't have the blue sky. So I kind of feel like we needed to change it up a little bit because the sky is blue. You want something that's gonna stand out. So thank you, who made that suggestion? That was a uh, good suggestion. Paul and Alma Solano. And now Uncle Corey's here. Oh boy, Uncle Corey's here. I keep telling him he needs to start his own Facebook page. He would have a bunch of followers right away from my audience wanting to say hi to him. He keeps giving me a hard time and wanting to go live while he's over here at my house. 
Okay, I think we're gonna use this banana cream yellow. It's a nice light yellow. Hmm. Marina says it'd be a good sign for a shirt. Go live and figure it out later. <laughs> Definitely would. Go live and figure it out later. I like that on a t-shirt. Okay, so the center bunny is gonna be this nice banana cream yellow color. Look how that pops. Good idea. Thank you for that suggestion, guys. So pretty. But it's cute. It really does stand out nicely. It reminds me of a peep. Mm -hmm. The color of the Easter peeps. I saw some peeps last night at Cracker Barrel in the gift shop that were chocolate pudding <laughs> flavor. And I was like, ew. You, oh, here we go. Let's do a happy mail. Tell me, do you like peeps? <laughs> yes or no? I think they're disgusting, but I know it is sort of a controversial topic. You either love them or you hate them. How do you feel about them, Aaliyah? I don't like them. She don't like them either. I also saw some that were cotton candy flavor, and I'm like, if I could get behind any peep flavor, it would probably be cotton candy, but I don't care for peeps. I'm not a sugar candy person. I'm a chocolate candy person. Oh, candy yeah. Person. <laughs> I do like chocolate stuff. Um, but I've, I've never been a big fan of like marshmallows unless they're in a s'more. I don't really care for marshmallows. I agree with you. There. I hate chocolate dipped marshmallows, like the little bunnies that you get or the Santas that you get at Christmas that are chocolate dipped marshmallows. Blech. Those are nasty. A little stale. Why are they better stale? That's funny. So Amber says, I hate them, but my kids love them. <laughs> um... Corey says, the only time I ask to go live is the time of year when I'm ramping up for a fundraiser. You hear that? He's using me. <laughs> Tell him we'll talk. <laughs> Aaliyah says we'll talk. By the way, Aaliyah, he says we need to get on top of planning the silent auction fundraiser for this year. Okay. All he's got to do is tell me. We're on it. Well, he's ready. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead, because this yellow is a little transparent, like the other colors aren't too bad. The coral and the lime, or the sea breeze aren't bad, but the yellow is still needs some more. So we're just gonna do a quick second coat on it. And then we're gonna add some fun little patterns to the bunnies, like polka dots and things like that. Okay. Who's our happy mail winner? Wanda Heilman. She likes some stale. Blech. <laughs> that should have been a screen grab right there. When I stuck my tongue out, y'all should have all screenshot it. And we'll put it on, we need to pull those and put them on a blooper or TikTok reel. That would be great. All Tamara's crazy expressions. Okay, second coat on the bunny. Marina says it's just a different texture. <laughs> you have to let them get stale first, then they're yummy. Maybe I've just been eating them, eating them too fresh all this time, Debbie. Beverly says they're too crunchy. I'm thinking there's got to be a way for me to melt one down and eat it and like it better. <laughs> Maybe it's good floating in a cup of hot something. Vanessa wants to know where you go to join Painters Clubhouse. Um, is the wait list on PaintersClubhouse.com? I think it probably is. Thank you. That's why we have Aaliyah here. She's so good at grabbing links and stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back and add a little bit more white and gray to that one spot that I accidentally painted over. Let me look at the picture. I can barely see my pencil lines anymore. Oh, they're maple syrup flavored. Ooh, yuck. They're bad enough. Yeah, I don't care for maple syrup flavored anything. It's gonna take a couple coats to fix that, so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint in my cute little bunny tails. And I'm just using a really small flat tip brush. This one's like itty bitty. Just paint in your bunny tails. Make them fluffy. This is definitely one of those times when if you use a little bit more paint, it looks cuter because it looks slightly textured. You've got the fluffiness of the bunny tail. And that would probably take a couple of coats to make it thick enough too. Look at those cute little tails. Okay, I'm also going to do a quick second coat on my license plate because it is dry and you can see a lot of that green popping through from the grass underneath. If you struggle with having too many brush strokes, it could be that you need a bigger paintbrush. Like right now, painting this little tiny, this little area, 
even though it's a small area, I have a lot of brush strokes. So I'm using a little bitty brush. So you just kind of have to keep smoothing the paint out and moving it around until it looks smooth. I'm just adding little touches of white to kind of lighten up the background of that truck window a little. Katrina is totally going to be making this. I'm excited. I want to see it. So if you guys end up painting one of the designs, whether it's this one or something else, I love it when you guys um, post pictures in our free group at Door Hanger Painting Tips. Uh, it's a free group here on Facebook. Or if you will text me pictures of what you've created, I love seeing those. Or if you are making a TikTok video where you're painting it, tag me. If you post it on Instagram, tag me. Whatever you do. I just want to see your work. I get excited when I see that you have painted something that I've taught you how to paint. And um, created, created something. Kathy is suggesting to use cotton balls. Cotton balls. Oh, to make it like three-dimensional? I guess for the tails. That's a cute idea. Get, having to get a little bit of gray because I got too much white in those little spots. So I'm just darkening it up with a little gray. Once we get all of our details on there, you're not going to notice all those little things. But it was bothering me, so <laughs> I fixed it. You guys are saying it's so cute. It's not even done yet. Wait till you see all the details. Aaliyah didn't know she was going to be here all day today while I paint this. I got nothing else to go. <laughs> she says she's got nothing else to do. Okay, let's paint our little tail lights red. And, it's, and hang on, let's use this one since it's in our rainbow paint color pack. It's called True Red. Actually, I have one of those right here already open. Um, and we're just going to paint the little tail lights. I'm going to dip it out of the lid since we don't need much. And I've already got my egg carton full of paint. So we're just painting these little round tail lights right here. The details are what makes something so cute. So don't shock, don't skimp on the details. Ooh, and after our paint is dried, I just noticed I can still barely see our Sharpie lettering. Can you see it? You can just barely make it out but it's enough that I should be able to paint the lettering back on here with no worries. <clears throat> All right, our little bunny here that has dried, the pink one, is looking pretty skimpy, so I'm gonna give it a quick second coat of this cactus flower before we start adding any polka dots or patterns or anything on it. And I'm not going into every single crack and crevice of this pink because that's, I mean, that when you do a second coat, you can kind of skimp and not have to get in every little nook and cranny and just kind of cover up the areas that need more paint. Makes it a little quicker. There we go. That sea breeze covered really well though, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so for some patterns, let's do some little polka dots maybe on this one. And I think I may just use like the bottom of one of these little sponge daubers because that's like about the size of polka dot that I want to do. And um, we'll just use this color. It's called Teal Mint. We're going to have like a million colors on this supply list. Just use what you have. If you don't have the colors we have, it's fine. Just use whatever colors you want to use. And I'm just dipping the end of this little sponge dauber in the paint. And then I'm just dabbing it on there like a stamp. And your polka dots are probably going to have a little bit of a texture to them. That is okay. We're, whim we're painting whimsically today. Texture is a good thing. Trying to polka dot in slow motion so she can get a picture. Oops, that one didn't make. There we go. I think I want to do one kind of a half of one down here. So I need like a, a sticky note. If y'all haven't seen me do this trick before, where's the really little sticky notes? The little ones are behind the paint. Oh, thank you. I couldn't see them. If you haven't seen me do this trick before, it's kind of like using painter's tape, but it's a sticky note instead. So if you've got a place where you want to do a polka dot, but you don't want to do the whole polka dot, put your sticky note down and kind of like daub half on the sticky note and half on the painting. And then when you peel it up, you'll only have half a dot. So it's kind of like a quick little trick. 
Georgine <laughs> says, I love this so much. Do you sell the cactus flower paint? So you can get all of these paints that I'm talking about, including this rainbow paint pack on Deco Art's website. I've put my affiliate link up in the video description for you. Um, you can just search for rainbow paint pack. They have a search bar in their shop. You can search for cactus flower or any of these lovely colors that I'm using. There's a bunch of them today. Normally I don't use this many colors in one painting, but since this is Easter, it calls for a wide variety of a color palette. So for the details on the yellow bunny, I'm gonna use this cadmium yellow because let me show you in comparison, see how much brighter it is? So it's gonna be a subtle pattern. It's not gonna be really, really bold, which we don't want something really, really bold. And I'm just gonna get a little round tip brush and I'm actually gonna draw this pattern on. Um, it's a little tricky to draw, but it's kind of like a, um, what do you call this pattern? It's like a, a lattice kind of pattern. Oh, yeah. And so I'm just gonna kind of freehand draw it on here. I used to do this pattern a lot at paint parties for people. Um, you just kind of draw these little clover patterns right beside each other and you just link them together as you're drawing them. And so it's kind of a tricky one to freehand. So if this feels like it's too hard for you, whoops, I kind of messed that up, but that's okay, nobody's gonna notice. Then you could just do polka dots on all of them if you wanted to. That would be a little easier. But because it's yellow on yellow, if I mess up a little bit, it's not gonna be super noticeable. Three foot rule. What's a three foot rule? Oh, stand three feet. And if you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're worrying about a mistake on a painting, she says stand three feet back and look at it again and see if you notice it. <laughs> Cause that's usually how far people are gonna be standing when they're in front of your door. They're not gonna be like six inches from the canvas like my face is right now. Let me kind of show you so far what this pattern's looking like. Do you see it? It's actually got a lot of texture to it too, which is kind of cool. So it's kind of like a little flower shape, but they're just stacked on top of each other and the top and sides are touching on each one. So I'm gonna finish filling our bunny in here. And then I'll show you what it looks like after I get all the little patterns on here. It also kind of reminds me of like a Moroccan tile sort of pattern, mm -hmm. but it could also be kind of considered like a lattice. So it just depends on- Is what, it a quatrefoil? Is uh, that what it's called, a quatrefoil? See, I always thought quatrefoil had more like points to it. Mm, it might. I don't know. I don't know what the rule is. If there is a rule, no, there may not be. We throw the rules out. We throw the rules out. We call it what we want to call it. It can get a little more tricky as you get up here on the ears because you're kind of having to do half flower shapes and just kind of throw them in there. So I'm just kind of. It's like the wild, wild west up here. We're just putting in random little shapes. So this would definitely be easier with a stencil, but if you're wanting to do it this small, stenciling is almost impossible sometimes on a shape this tiny. Okay, it's definitely not even looking like quadruple once you get up here. It's just little flowery shapes. <laughs> but when you stand three feet back, you won't be able to tell. Look how cute. Super cute. <laughs> you said, I don't know why, but the yellow bunny gives me pineapple vibes. <laughs> Probably because it's right next to this color and it kind of makes it makes you think of pineapples. Okay, we're going to do, um, what are we going to do? Let's do, uh, do I want to do chevron? Chevron might be kind of hard. I might have to kind of pencil it on first or it definitely will look like the wild, wild west. So I'm just gonna start right in the fattest part of the bunny and I'm just gonna draw an up, down, up, down pattern. And then I'm gonna move up a little bit and everywhere that the design goes up, my pencil's gonna go up and everywhere it goes down, my pencil's gonna go back down. So if scaring, if, if it's drawing chevron scares the crap out of you, find something to trace. You could definitely trace this on with like a, uh, your carbon paper. 
but since we're doing it kind of small, I don't feel like it has to be just so. They definitely got a little wild up there. Okay, let me show you how wild my pencil drawn chevron looks <laughs> up here at the on the ears. It get, gets kind of crazy, but that's okay. Now we're gonna take a, actually I was gonna pick another color, but instead of adding another color to the paint color list, let's just put a drop of red in our cactus flower and it's gonna make a darker shade of cactus flower pink. And I just need it to be dark enough that it shows up on top of the current color we're using. And then we're just gonna paint in inside the chevron every other one. And I probably need to switch brushes here, but certain areas are gonna be really skinny and certain areas aren't, so the round tip brush may be the way to go. So I'm kind of tracing over my pencil lines for each chevron and then painting every other one, filling it in. It's okay. <coughs> Did I miss any questions? <coughs> no, you've kind of gotten quiet. Y'all gotten quiet? Have I mesmerized you with my painting abilities? <laughs> Either that or Facebook is frozen up and it's just not showing us comments. That's been known to happen. I know it probably feels really early to be painting Easter, but goodness, uh, Easter is April 17th. And so a lot of times as crafters, we try to get ahead on the upcoming holiday. So if I'm painting this right now in the middle of February, it gives you guys time to get one painted as well, time to sell it so that your customer can hang it on their door about a month before the holiday. Because people really start decorating for Easter in March. So if you want to be able to have some of these painted up and ready to sell, you got to start painting them now and, and you can't wait until, until it's too late because your customer is going to want to be able to go ahead and hang it up. Okay, let me show you my chevron. Here we go. So it, this, this one right here is almost losing the shape of the bunny because of all the crazy polka dots. So when we get done with all of our details, we're going to go back in with a little bit of black or something and kind of redefine the shape of the bunny and that'll make it easier to kind of see that. So next let's add in our grass. So I'm going to go back to the original color that we used down here and we're going to add in some fun little Easter grass, you know, like that crazy stuff that parents hate because it goes in the bottom of the Easter basket and makes just an awful mess. We're going to add that in just right down here around the bottoms of the bunny. And I'm just taking this little round tip brush and I'm kind of just flicking up in all different directions because that, gr that crazy Easter grass is kind of crazy. It goes all different directions. And it's around the bottoms of our bunnies. <coughs> Again, the devil's in the details. This is gonna make it look so, like it's gonna look so good. Like you did a whole lot of hard work on this and you may have, but your customer is gonna be just blown away all that. So add your grass in. Look how cute. That should be our another t-shirt design. Look how cute. <laughs> Lynn says so stinking cute. Yes, I love to say that a lot too. Stinking cute. Um, we could also add in some down here now around our, our little truck with our round tip brush. Kind of add in some little grass to kind of make it look more like grass. You could even add in flowers. You can get as busy with this as you want to. With canvas painting, it's really fun because you can you can just add in so many details if you want to, and you may even have a hard time finding a stopping point. I'm gonna add a little bit down here by the the wheels too. Or the not the wheels, the tires. What size is the canvas again? 
Uh, this is a 12 by 16. And what size is your template? Uh, my template I printed out at 12 inches. I'm just going in and I'm adding in some little sprigs of grass in spots. It, it's hard to find a quittance point. Like I said, you could keep adding more and more and more detail. The more you work with this, you could add little bunnies hopping down here. I'm giving you guys ideas. I'm not saying I'm going to do all this because I ain't got time for that today. But you could definitely just keep adding more and more and more. So there's our little sprigs of grass all around the truck. I feel like it needs some more way down here because those look like, like a little bit too symmetrically placed. <laughs> so we'll just do a little extra to make it look more random down here. So add in as many as you want. Somebody said it would be cute to make flowers to the grass with polka dots. Yes, I thought about that. Um, I don't know how much time we're going to have, so I'm going to finish up and then we'll see what we've got time for. Okay, we need another coat of white on this little license plate because goodness, that green is just keeps popping to the top of that license plate. So I'm gonna put one more coat of white right here. Jolene thinks it needs an egg or a carrot on the license plate. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you for that suggestion. I've got red in that brush or something that keeps coming through. I had to rinse it out. I like that idea. Okay. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do my lettering. And let's just do this the easy way and just get out a paint pen. We're gonna use this Posca paint pen. This one's getting pretty empty, but I think I can still make it work. So this is the five millimeter Posca pen. And we're just tracing over those Sharpie lines so you can kind of barely see them. So take your time. Actually, this pen is running out and it's frustrating me. So I'm gonna switch to my Artistro paint marker because I know this one is brand new and it is gonna work better, I think. So what are your thoughts on framing this? I don't usually frame mine because I don't keep them up long enough to really warrant putting a frame on it. Um, I feel like that's just an extra expense that I don't care to do. If it was something that I was going to keep up like all year, I might put a frame on it. But since this is just something fun that'll only be up for a month or so, I probably won't bother with a frame. But if you found a frame that you could like easily pop on and off these canvases and maybe change them out, you could definitely like reuse it for each project. How do you keep from getting your hand in the paint? Oh, she gets her hand in the paint. I still get my hand in the paint. I, I don't keep from it. I just try to minimize it as much as I can. Okay, now let's see. Let's go ahead and start adding our details on our design. I'm going to switch to my smaller Posca pen. I don't have a RT, Artistro pen this small, but this is the three millimeter size, and so it can do like a more fine tip um, detail line, and so I'm going to use it to just start adding in some little whimsical lines and things that will kind of help make our truck and our bunnies kind of pop. And these don't have to look like coloring book lines. You know, coloring book lines are like a solid line that perfectly connects in every single spot. This is more uh, like sketched, if you will. Like I keep picking it up and putting it back down to make sure that I don't have perfect lines. I just like the look of it better. Do I need to move slower for you? Mm -mm, okay. And now we're gonna do this around our bunnies too. And this will help the shape of our bunnies come back. So we kind of lost the shape of our bunnies a little bit with all the crazy patterns and things. But by doing this, you'll be able to individually see each bunny a little better. Sometimes you can get a little bit of paint on your marker and then your marker will suddenly stop writing. So if that happens, just kind of scrape it off on like a scrap piece of paper and keep going. 
I'm gonna add a little bit around our fluffy tails too. Make them kind of pop a little bit more. Look at the difference. It really made our bunnies kind of just pop. You can see the shapes of them a lot, but especially on that bunny there. Add a little bit more to our license plate and our bumper. Donna has a question on Facebook. Okay, what's Donna's question? Would a paint, a pit pen be good? What's a pit pen? Is that a typo? It probably is an autocorrect, but this is a paint pen. This is what I'm using is a paint pen. So Donna, if you will clarify your question, I'll see if I can answer a little better. Let me put a little bit around our tail lights too. And then I'm gonna get a white one and do a little bit of designs with white. Well, I haven't used this one. I haven't used this one in a while. It wasn't click clacking. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of highlight with a white inside the tail lights and on the bumper. A little bit on the tires. The more marks like this and stuff you do, the busier it's going to be. And it's going to feel like it's got more movement in the painting. And you're going to feel a little less picky about all the little flaws and things that you didn't like about your painting. I feel like this always just brings everything alive a little bit more. Donna says a shading pen, but I'm still not sure. I've never heard of a shading pen. So there's all of our little white highlights. You see them? Especially on the little tires down there. I've never heard of a shading, shading pen. Okay, let's do, um, somebody suggested doing a little carrot on the license plate. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use this one from the rainbow paint set. It's called Warm Sunset. It's a nice carrot color. And I'm just going to freehand a little messy carrot here. This is not going to be a really neat carrot. Are the Posca paint pens the best? So the Posca paint pens are really good, but I have recently acquired some of these Artistro paint markers. And to me, they are just as good and they're cheaper. So if you um, want to try a pack of paint pens, I would suggest you start with these. I think if you use my link, you get 10% off. Um, and so these are really good and they can be used on a variety of surfaces and they come with a whole bunch of colors. Okay. And now I need some green for the stem of our carrot. So I'm just going to take the green that we used for our grass and add a little stem on our carrot. Do you have a video for the pattern on the yellow bunny? Um, no, I don't. It's just a, like a little Moroccan tile or lattice pattern. So if you want to screenshot it, I will hold it up here for you and you do can kind of Google. Do we have that stencil? I, we do have a stencil like this, but the stencil, the, the patterns are like this big. So, you know, that would cover the whole bunny. But to do one this small, I would just um, maybe like Google a lattice or a Moroccan tile pattern and print it out really small and then use your graphite paper to transfer it or just use it as a visual reference and practice on some cardboard first. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> You're so sweet. Hi, Nilma. I appreciate that. Donna says, I buy it. <laughs> Are you offering to buy this one? Okay. Do we want to add any more details? I'm looking at my picture, make sure I got everything. I think the only thing I might want to add is like somebody suggested some little flowers at the bottom. So since I've already got a litany of colors here, we're just going to take some little yellow and maybe do some little sprigs in our, in our, uh, painting here we can add some little yellow I don't know what flowers are called maybe this is called like a crocus <laughs> our crocus is yellow uh, yes they are so I'm just adding some little random white yellow and purple white yellow and purple are you over there googling answers to all my questions oh I'm horticulture she has a I learn something new about you every time I spend time with you she has a horticulture, horticulture degree how did I not know that that was the banana cream. I'm also going to take some of this cadmium yellow and kind of just dab it in there for a little more color. You could do it in, in either order. I probably should have done the cadmium yellow first and then the banana cream second, but it doesn't matter. Connie says she would love to sit and paint with you. Oh, well, if you want to paint with me, come and hang out with me in Dallas, Texas next summer. 
July 15th and 16th. We've got a two-day painting event, and I'm going to be crafting and painting with you guys. Christy Hawkins will be there, the one we were talking about earlier that teaches canvas painting. Look at my little yellow flowers. <laughs> I feel like it needs a little more, but it's one of those things where you're like, I could just keep going and going and never stop. So, daffodils or tulips. I love daffodils. Hold your arm up. You have paint all over it. Yep. Evidence. I do get paint on my arm. Um, so if you want to come paint with me next summer in Dallas, Texas, the link is up above. You can go also go to southernadornmentslive.com. It's a two-day event. We're going to be doing 12 different crafts together over those two days. There are, I think, 10 different guest artists that are going to be coming and sharing their talents with you. Um, we, have we have announced the lineup for it on our website. So if you go to southernadornmentslive.com, there's a button up at the top. You can click and click on presenters, and you can see who all is going to be there. E uh, Ia or Eva, I can't read. My name, I, do, I, so I just said I need my glasses on. I have Hi. glasses on. Aya. Aya. Aya says, I love your work. So beautiful. Thank you. If you want to see more videos similar to this or me painting on wood, go follow me on YouTube. There's a whole YouTube channel there with hundreds of videos. Cindy says, Miss Tracy uses pit pens to detail her projects. I need to go watch that. Miss Tracy is actually going to be one of our presenters at the uh, Dallas event. So um, she's very talented as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to grab this template, it's called the Easter Truck at shopdoorhangers.com. You just need some graphite paper to transfer it to your canvas. You could teach these at paint parties or do this with your kids um, or sell them at your local craft craft fair that's probably they've probably got craft fairs coming up in the spring I would imagine um, but come join me in Dallas it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, if you want to get a free template to try one of these on your own again go visit our free library and download some there all right if you want to text me my number's up above you'll get notified when I go live by joining the text list as well so I will um, let you know when I go live next see you later bye y'all